I wanted to talk about a tree stand setup strategy and how to set up a tree stand and go beyond the basics. Obviously you want to stay safe. But I'm going to go through the steps that we take and, um, and part of it's your ability to get a shot off. That's what a lot of people don't realize. You're setting up a tree stand. We'll talk about why we would face it a certain way, but we want to get a shot off. You know, if you're an inexperienced hunter, you're not going to get your shot off a certain percentage of the time because you're going to spook the deer with a bow when you're trying to pull that bow back, when you're trying to grab your bow. And I want to make sure that we move you ahead a bunch of years, a couple decades of experience so that you don't spook deer when you're in your stand. Now, deer gets downwind of you, you're going to spook them. But they should never spook because they see you, see you move, hear you, hear you scrape against a tree. And to me, there's some principles that you need to follow when you set up a tree stand to make sure that you don't spook deer. So spook proof tree stand setup rules we'll talk about. First, I want to get into what we're doing. We're using high quality ladders. We want these pre-installed already here. We want the stand already in place. We have a bedding area there. We have a bedding area down there about 70 yards away. We have bedding area over there. We're just off to the edge in a cruising spot. Water hole over there, food plot up there. So we're in a location where we can sneak in here and hunt. In fact, we can come right down here really good access to get in here nice and clean. We have a switchgrass bank up top where there's no deer bedding. So we can get in and out of here pretty good, morning or afternoon. What we can't do is spook deer when we get in here and we're in the tree and we wanna get a shot. So we're putting the ladder right here. We also use a lifeline from Hunter Safety. My bow rope, that's really critical. I don't know if you've ever had to climb up a tree without a bow rope, but it's pretty bad. Jack from Family Traditions, the owner, he includes these with all the stands. These are incredibly built 20 foot ladders. And that's about all, all the height I go nowadays. People ask me that all the time. And used to be you would use 14 steps, you screwed into a tree. I think I had 40 setups at one time, but we'd use 14 steps that'd get us up about 24 to 25 feet, even with my stubby legs. And looking back, it was just kind of high. You know, we, we really didn't need to be that high. My shot is right down here, and I am a right-handed shooter. So we have this lifeline. It'll get us up safely. We're getting up there. When I get up there, the shot is down here. I hope you notice, I'm climbing up the back side of the tree. So if there are any deer that are out here, if I go slow, these stands are quiet. They don't make any noise. You can't make any noise. You can't scrape the side of this bark. You can't sit here and put on a bunch of gear, get dressed. You gotta get here, get up that stand so you don't spook any deer. That's a big part of it. A lot of, a lot of hunts are ruined before the hunt even begins because of the noise and the commotion made at the base of the stand. Plus, I wanna come in here. I don't even wanna touch down here. I wanna touch up here and start climbing. That puts my handprint that might be there for several hours that the deer can smell way above their nose. So if they happen to come through here, they're not gonna smell me coming into here. They're not gonna smell me five hours after I was here and that's very important. We wanna clean this trail all the way in and out so we're not leaving a scent signature. When I get to the stand, I'm climbing up the back side of the tree from where I expect my shot. I'm right-handed. That means I want the stand positioned like this up here and this is so critical. I have a bow hanger up there. The bow hangs right in front of my face. All I have to do is I use hand warmer tubes. If it's cold, I literally have to take my hand out of the hand warmer tube. One's on the bow, one's on the release string about right here. And I can literally take that off, pull back and shoot. Key, the majority of my deer I shoot sitting down. That's why I have this facing here for right-handed shooter. I want to stand, this one has webbing seat, it's all USA steel, rolled steel, rolled steel construction, so it has a foot rest, has a 300 pound T-screw that holds the stand in place, has rubber coated chains holding the platform up. It's all steel construction, so it's quiet. Aluminum's very pingy. So when I'm up there, all I have to do is when that deer's walking by on this logging trail down below, I can just pull back and shoot. Critical to shoot sitting down. If you're standing, you move your whole body when you look around. When you hear a sound behind you, instead of sitting there like this and just looking slowly behind you, a lot of times you turn your body. It's just instinct, unfortunately. You move your whole body, they see you. When you're standing up, you're the figure of a man. Standing up like this, away. It's gotta be the most imposing sight that a deer can see when you're standing up like this. So I want my back against a tree. I wanna be sitting down and I wanna be just like this 
and I want to be able to draw back. And then I can shoot from here all the way back to here, about 180 degrees, just from a sitted position. Now I've had to stand and shoot deer. If I see them coming and they're up here for some reason, then I'm gonna stand when, it, when I have the chance, when their head gets behind a tree, and I'm gonna take a shot up top. I'm gonna have to turn, stand up on the platform, and I'm gonna turn like this and shoot uphill. I've had to do that. Or shoot around the tree like this, shoot back up there. So you don't have to move much though. And a lot of times, like in the case of shooting back at that angle, if I'm sitting down and I have a quiet quality stand like our family traditions, and I'm just moving a little bit and I can still stay seated and take the shot. It's that dang right-handed shot for me as a right-handed archer that I have to stand up even for a gun and take that shot to the right, it's a little bit different. But even then I'm standing up slowly, quiet platform, dead quiet stand, and I'm turning and taking that shot. So safety is critical, obviously. You know, that's where we use a lifeline. I like the stand to be well less than 180 degrees away from this ladder, meaning I don't want that ladder on the, or that stand on the back side. For one, it's easier to spook deer because I have to move all the way around and get in the front. They're watching me get settled in the front as opposed to hiding in when that, that stand's angled on the side right here. I can step into that tree stand very easily, especially on a smaller tree like this with a little bit more at 120 degree angle as a, or around the tree as opposed to 180 degrees around the tree. But I can, from up there, step onto that platform. And that's what we do a lot of times too. We run our ladder about two feet above the platform and that allows us to step right down into that stand very easily and make it a lot safer. I don't wanna to have to step up from the top rung to get into my stand. Just don't need to do that. And what you find is when you're not hunting the same stand every single day, we're not hunting a bait pile right there where deer come in and they're wary. That's just simply a cruising trail between bedding areas. We could shoot at a buck all day long here. We have the potential to shoot at one, especially during the rut. He could be cruising by at any time. So with that being said, we can expect that shot any time here. We can expect this stand to have great value. We can shoot sitting down. We can get in and out by climbing up the backside, not spooking deer. But most of all, when the moment of truth comes, we're not spooking deer. I haven't spooked a deer for years and years with a bull and shooting a deer with a bow because you pull back when they get behind a tree over here, you're already seated. It takes so minimal movement to pull back. By staying in a seated position, you're more in a fetal position, it keeps you warmer, less exposed to the elements, stay more comfortable for a long period of time so you're not fidgety. You don't have to move your whole body to look, you just look like this, turn your head slightly. You'll spook a lot less game and that's the name of the game. And also, that doesn't mean you have to sacrifice safety in any way. Get up there, be comfortable in the tree, use some quality products that are very, very quiet in using. Look at this thing is solid to the tree. We just set this about a month ago before our charity event that we have for Kicking Bear. It's very, very solid to the tree, doesn't move. That means we're being quiet, getting in it, getting out of it, and certainly while we're on stand. So when, again, when the moment of truth arrives, we can make the shot. Now, that's when the, uh, that's when the um, error you know, comes. That's when your failure rate really shows. It's kind of like when you're inexperienced, you know, not everyone can make the shot. We all have a failure rate. Even in a, the most experienced bow hunter isn't going to make the best shot 100% of the time. Maybe they make it 98% of the time or 80. If you're new at bow hunting, maybe you make a good shot 70% of the time, 60, 50, I don't know what it is. But getting to that point, getting the shot off, should be 100% if you follow these tips setting up your tree stands this fall and beyond. Hey folks, I really appreciate you watching and I wanna invite you to check out our main website, whitetailhabitatsolutions.com. I'm gonna miss all these, but we have seed to offer, hats, articles, web classes, books, consultations, and even a new podcast. I think we have 17 podcasts out there right now for you to listen to. So we have a lot to offer. Most of all, if you don't want to buy anything, I'm going to keep offering free videos, free articles. We have over 600 articles on the site. And uh, most of all, thank you very much for watching, reading, listening, being a part of White to Habitat Solutions. If you want to check this stuff out, awesome. Links are in the description.